Hey everyone, so we know it's Halloween, so today I wanted to share some of the spookiest, scariest, most horrific situations that I've had to deal with as a real estate agent. So these are my own personal dealings, whether I was helping clients list a house or buy a house. I didn't want to use any company stories or anything like that and take away from agents' own stories, so I want to use my own. So these are nine different situations. I kind of mix up with a little bit uh, kind of darker s stories with lighthearted ones. That way it's a good mix. Uh, but these are all things that happen. I'm going to cover a death, some needles, a rat. And these are just the stories that I can disclose. There's a couple more that I can't disclose. Uh, so we won't go into those. But these are the ones that I can share. These are nine different scary Halloween stories as a real estate agent. So number one. This deal was a little hectic. It was one of my first deals. The listing agent put in the MLS, contact the owner directly, put their phone number, contact them directly for any forms, contracts, or questions, or anything. Literally put wording like that, that contact them for anything, including forms or signatures or anything. So we get closer to closing. The lender needs a couple more days. This listing agent does not answer his phone. Call, text, email, nothing. We were about to expire the contract and we just needed a couple more days. The lender was going to get it done. We just need a couple more days. So being a younger agent, I made this mistake, but reached out directly to the sellers and said, Hey, here's the situation we're in. We just need a couple more days. They get super angry because they wanted their money today or like today or tomorrow, whenever the closing was not wait three more days. They wanted it now. So they were angry. Then the listing agent is just furious, goes off on me, just lights into me. Then we get to closing, finally closes a couple days later. My client is an 82 year old, the sweetest lady I've ever known. We show up to the house after closing, listing agent says, hey, I put a key under the mat for you. The rest of the keys are on the kitchen counter. Get to the house, there's no key under the mat. Call the listing agent and said, hey, uh, I think you said there was a key under the mat, I can't find it, did you put it somewhere else? And they said, no, it should be under the key or under the mat. And I said, I'm looking right now, there's nothing there. And he said, tough luck. So literally we were trapped out of the house in the Florida heat. My poor 82 year old client trapped out. We had to call locksmith, wait a couple hours. Then when we finally get into the house, there's no keys in the kitchen, not even a garage door opener, nothing. The listing agent just took them and disposed of them. Could never find them. We had to pay to get the whole house rekeyed so that way she could enjoy her brand new home. That was just a horrific situation for the client. Situation number two. Now, this one is a doozy. This one was wild. I was less speechless when this happened. Door knocking a listing, walking up to the driveway. That's how I got built my business in Florida, which is door knocking. Walking up, there's this contractor working in the driveway, working on a project. They said, hey, go ring the front doorbell. That's where the homeowner will meet you at. Ring the doorbell. And my awful script back then was just, hey, I'm Zach. I'm a local realtor. You ever thought about selling your house? And she actually said, yes. Could you come by tomorrow? I want to go ahead and move over to the Carolinas. And so I thought, awesome. So I came by the next day. I found out the contractor was actually living with the homeowner. They were working out where, hey, he could live there for free. In exchange, he fixes up her house. And so we were walking the house, touring the home. That way I could get a feel of what we're about to list. And I go to reach out for a closed door. And she says, no, 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 you can't open that. He's in there sleeping right now. That's his room, the contractor. And so we get the listing signed. I leave. An hour later, she calls me and says he passed away. He passed away in that room overnight and neither of us knew it. I was inches away from opening this door. And so unfortunately he had a heart attack. It was just a wild situation. Uh, we did later end up listing that house. It just took a little bit longer, but just a wild situation. Third situation, this is every realtor's worst nightmare. So door knocked this home, got the listing, listed the property, and this is before the craziness in the real estate market where multiple offers were very common. So we listed it, got multiple offers, which is just unheard of, all of them over list price. And the owner would not accept a single offer, which was the strangest thing. Like, wait a minute, why, why aren't we accepting an offer? So a couple of days go by, I'm trying to drag out these offers because their expiration dates are coming up. Like, hey, just give us a few more days, a few more days. So it gets close to like a week. Finally, the owner says, yeah, we'll go with this offer after every other one expired except this last one. Come to find out, this owner said when we list the house, they want to move into an apartment for a couple months and then later down the road, they'll use me to buy a house. Well, they actually went under contract with a house in Tampa. So we're in Clearwater. This is like 15 minutes away, mind you. Went under contract 
within that week that they were stalling and not accepting anything, not communicating. And the reason they went under contract with a new house with an agent, a different agent, is they said they wanted a local expert. And I, I was so confused because I was like, that's 15 minutes away. I can help you guys out. That's nothing. And they said, no, Zach, we really wanted a local expert. Come to find out, when I look at the property in Tampa, when they finally closed on it, they paid full price, all cash. This is before the crazy real estate, real estate market the past two days. Full price, all cash, not a dollar under the list price to use a local expert. This is just a horrific situation for real estate agents. Finding out our client uses, or our client is going to buy a house with somebody else, even though we have their listing, it was just wild. Next situation, this was one of the creepiest ones, is another listing from door knocking, listed the house, buyers have an inspection, they find rats in the attic, droppings everywhere, wires chewed, rats. Well, my homeowners already moved. They were several hours away and couldn't deal with it. So they paid for a pest company to come out, but it's not like bugs. They can't just spray for rats. You have to catch them. And so because they were hours away, Every single day, I would have to go into the house, climb up a ladder, push up the little attic hatch door, move it to the side, stick my head up into this rat attic and check the trap. And if there was a rat there, I would have to call the pest company. They would come out, change it. But that was just the creepiest thing to have to move over this attic door and stick my head up knowing there's just rats all in this attic. So finally got that home closed, but that was just wild. Uh, Another situation, a little bit more lighthearted, used door knockers to pick up a listing one time, just hung door knockers on doors, didn't even knock. And I get a call and I say, hey, this is Zach. And they say, hello, this is Michael Jordan. <laughs> so I thought, hey, Michael Jordan just called me. No, it was just a homeowner, same name, but they ended up using me to list a rental property. But I thought that was pretty cool that they had the name Michael Jordan. Uh, this situation is absolutely uh, scary, fits right into Halloween. So I'm helping these investors buy this investment property. They want to flip it. Well, the home is owned by a daughter. She doesn't live there, but the mom does. The mom lives there for free, has lived there for years. We get closer and closer to closing. The mom does not want to move out. She says, this is my house. I've been here for years. I'm not going anywhere. Finally, the daughter talked the mom down where the mom said, you know what? If I had a car to drive to work, then I would move wherever because I can get to work. So the daughter bought the mom a truck. Mom still wouldn't move out. So then we had to do the formal eviction process. Finally got the mom removed. Mom and her, I think it was her boyfriend. So the day after closing, my investors are out of state. So this whole time I've been video, uh, videoing the home, sending them pictures, live updates. Close on the home. Home is just trashed everywhere. I mean, this home was already filthy and nasty. We knew it needed a full gut. But the mom just left trash everywhere. She was evicted, didn't clean it up. The next day, it's getting later in the evening. That was my first mistake. And we walk up to the house, Taylor and I. A key is broken off in the front door. A key is broken off. And that was very, very weird. Never seen that before. And I was like, that was not there before. Also, saw needles all over the front yard. Needles in the house. And then I saw the fenced-in gate to the backyard was open. And so it's getting very a lot of red flags here. Needles key broken off, gate open. So I walk around a little bit to the side yard within the fenced in backyard and a window is wide open. So I get out of there. I'm like, no, I, I'm not getting in this house at all. So we had to call the police. They had to do a search, walk through the entire home. Luckily, nobody was in there. But when we opened the door and got in, like I said, there was needles everywhere, junk, trash, bugs. It was just nasty. So we, we had to lock up the house, lock up the windows. I had to go to the hospital and get a little biohazard container, get some big old thick gloves. That way we could start putting some of those uh, needles away properly. So that was very sketchy situation, uh, being nighttime and seeing all these things like somebody was in this house since it's closed. So that was very, very weird. Uh, another deal, helping out an investor. They chose to not have a termite inspection. Granted, this house is like 100 years old, wood frame. And if you know Florida homes, it's not if, it's when. Every home is going to have termites at some point. Did not have a termite inspection. Contractor starts doing the work, taking drywall down. The entire house 
was just chewed alive. Termite damage everywhere. Everything needed to be re replaced. All the studs, subflooring, everything. Then on top of that, the contractor that the inspector hired did not do any of the work correctly. We They had an inspector come out to check his work as he was going. Subfloor wasn't attached. The studs weren't even attached. Like where you put the drywall up to the studs, those studs running floor to ceiling weren't even attached to anything. They were just floating. All this work that was just so bad. Unfortunately, the owner just had to cut ties, sell it at a loss because it just he couldn't keep pumping money into it. Basically, the contractor too just took his money and ran. Crazy situation. Uh, lighter hearted one, listed a property. My sign got egged. So I don't know if it was some high schoolers or whatever else, but drove by my listing one day and there was just egg splatter all over my sign. Uh, and the last situation, this can be realtor's worst nightmares. It was a short sale. This was my very, very first time doing a short sale. Basically, if you don't know what that is, real quick, let's say the owner owes $200,000 on a mortgage, but the home's only worth $150,000. That means there's a negative $50,000 balance that if the owner sold the home today, they would have to pay another negative $50,000. Well, they didn't have that. So what you can do is a short sale. So that means we're gonna sell it short under what we owe. And sometimes the mortgage company will waive the difference and say, hey, it's okay, we'll eat the loss. It's just part of lending out money. So that was a short sale. To start, start it off with a company, we had to submit all this documentation and this company would respond once a week to our inquiries. So we would submit the documentation. They'd come back and say, hey, can you change the date? We change the date. Next week, they would say, oh, this I needs dotted. And I'm being serious. The I needs dotted on this line. So we'd resubmit that, wait next week. Oh, this T needs better crossed. And then the next week, oh, actually now this date is out of date and doesn't work anymore. So this went on for like two months before I was like, can you not just send me everything you need? Any corrections, let's do it all at once. This makes no sense at all. Finally got that approved. Well, they give you like a window to sell the house. So for me, I think it was like uh, six months. So this house does did need some work. We were getting towards the end of the deadline. We had days left. Finally, an offer came through. It was, our, it was our only offer at the time. We had to go with it. Well, that buyer was a first-time home buyer using a first-time home buyer grant through the city. So we not only had to pass inspections, we had to pass the city inspections on top of that. And so to make this deal happen, Taylor and I, we're out there in the front yard, building screens, like cutting metal framing, building screens to put those up, working on dryer vent exhaust. Uh, we had to go find one special spring to fix a broken window. We had to install smoke detectors and we had to do all these little repairs that were just hours and hours and hours of time in order to get this deal through. But if you ever deal with a short sale, you know what I'm talking about, that that could be a scary situation. But these are just nine of the situations that I actually can disclose to you so let me know your scary situation down below. And if you need anything, uh, reach out in the link below and we can connect. Glad to help any agent out that I can. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.